Welcome to the Kotke Ride Home for Tuesday, August 17th, 2021. I'm Jackson Bird. Today, inside the world of the quasi-secret WhatsApp mango economy. Plus, it turns out Saturn is kind of jiggly inside. And the beginning of a season marked by the end of an era for department stores. Here are some of the cool things from the news today. Some people are going to incredible lengths to get their hands on mangoes. Messaging a guy who goes by a fake name on WhatsApp, showing up to a random cargo bay at an airport, and then shelling out hundreds of dollars for several crates of mangoes that you might then distribute to others in various local WhatsApp communities. What is going on? Why are people doing all of this for mangoes? Can't you just get some mangoes at a local grocery store or farmer's market? Technically, yes, but if you want the good stuff, the really good stuff, then no. As you might know from how few varieties of bananas are available in the United States, the world of fruit imports and exports is exceedingly complex. As Ahmed Ali Akbar, co-host of the excellent See Something, Say Something podcast, explained in a recent long read in Eater, while American mango consumption doubled between 2000 and 2018, the love of mangoes in Pakistan goes back thousands of years. And for good reason. Their mangoes are apparently awesome. Way better than some of the varieties common to American grocery stores, which are largely imported from Mexico and chosen to be the most shelf-stable and picture-perfect variety for our grocery stores. Some of Pakistan's prime varieties, however, like the Anwar Ratal and the Chansa, as Akbar describes them, quote, smell strongly of flowers and have a custard-like creaminess that drips with a sticky sweet juice. A popular method of consumption involves rolling the small yellow-green fruit around, slicing off the top, and sucking out the liquefied pale yellow or ochre flesh like you're drinking a juice box from nature, end quote. Akbar says mangoes are so beloved in Pakistan that it's become a bit of a cliché, especially in literature. But he also shares an amazing 13th century poem by Amir Khusrau, which translated says, quote, He visits my town once a year. He fills my mouth with kisses and nectar. I spend all my money on him. Who, girl, your man? No, a mango. End quote. So yeah, the mango appreciation goes way back. And for many Pakistani immigrants in America, the grocery store varieties here just aren't up to snuff. But of the 500,000 tons of mangoes imported to the U.S. in 2019, only 100 tons of them were from Pakistan, despite the fact that Pakistan is the sixth largest mango exporter by volume, according to Akbar. So why aren't they exporting more mangoes to the U.S.? It's complicated. Super complicated. So first, mangoes have a pretty short growing season and are kind of needy while they're growing and pretty delicate once harvested. They also ripen super fast. You really only have a few days before they go bad. But then, quoting Akbar and Eater, Fruit importing involves a surprising amount of diplomacy and technology. Before exporting a fruit, a nation must receive authorization from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Countries typically request market access, and that begins the authorization process, a USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, or APHIS, representative explained in an email. We analyze the plant pest risk and necessary measures to mitigate that risk and then move forward with the authorization. Imports aren't allowed entry until that process is done. In other words, any form foreign produce that arrives legally on our shores does so only after years of discussion and development between the government of origin and the USDA, end quote. Pakistani mangoes were approved for import into the U.S. in 2010 as a part of a diplomatic move to improve relations. They were approved with the caveat that they be treated with a fungicidal dip and irradiated before being sold in order to prevent the spread of pests. Now, those are relatively common requirements for imported fruits, but currently there aren't any irradiation facilities facilities in Pakistan that are approved by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So, quoting again, Normally, under non-pandemic conditions, exporters buy Pakistani mangoes from farms, pack them in pre-approved boxes, and send them on to an APIHS control center, which verifies that the paperwork and packaging meets its standards. Then, the mangoes are put into a sealed container and sent to an irradiation facility, where they're irradiated and held in storage. And finally, the middleman finds a way to get the mangoes to customers before they rot. 
By contrast, Mexican mangoes are just trucked over the border in appropriate packaging, and some loads even bypass the irradiation process. But it's not irradiation that makes Pakistani mangoes expensive. A significant number of Mexican mangoes are also irradiated. The difference is that the Mexican mangoes ride on trucks while the Pakistani ones fly. And it's that cost of transportation, in the view of many of the scientists and middlemen I spoke to, that accounts for the higher price. Mexican mangoes cost about $1.50 at Whole Foods, while Pakistani mangoes can go for over $7 each, end quote. And complicating that transportation cost and timeline even more is the lack of any direct flights between Pakistan and the U.S., meaning the mangoes have to waste precious time on a layover, typically in Dubai. It's an incredible challenge, but it hasn't stopped people from trying. Tons of entrepreneurs and small businesses have cropped up over the last decade trying to successfully get the good mangoes to the U.S., but most of them have since shuttered their doors after losing tons of money on failed attempts to get every step of the puzzle right. Enter WhatsApp. The main mango importer on WhatsApp is a company called Farm Fresh, founded by Zulfikar Momin and operating out of both Texas and Pakistan. The key to their success thus far is controlling basically every step of the process themselves, being as hands-on as possible. And also, according to Akbar, being able to get their shipments directly to consumers who want them by tapping WhatsApp communities. Quoting once more, if U.S. regulations pose nearly insurmountable roadblocks to Pakistani mango importers, then WhatsApp has proven to be something of a mango superhighway. While the messaging app is popular worldwide, over 50 million people use WhatsApp Business, its commerce-focused arm, it's a lifeline for Pakistanis in particular, the food writer Zainab Shah told me. Pakistan's burgeoning mango industry is a microcosm that spotlights the app's broader role as an incredibly important place for the global Pakistani community to do all sorts of business. The diaspora is a source of commerce and communication for the homeland, and WhatsApp, with its free international calls and secure messaging, is the primary form of communication. Last year, the platform began rolling out a wider variety of ways to do business, such as adding catalogs, QR codes, and shopping carts." End quote. So the app was well poised to fill this need. Because while shop owners were occasionally able to get their hands on imported mangoes from Pakistan, they often struggled to get the word out or ship the mangoes out fast enough to the people who wanted them before they went bad. WhatsApp enables individuals to help organize and, in many cases, become pickup and delivery people themselves, picking up several boxes of mangoes at an airport cargo bay and then dispensing them to everyone they met in an interest-based WhatsApp group, for example. Quote, mosques in Connecticut, aunties in California, and engineers in New Jersey would all coordinate bulk orders from Farm Fresh. This year, a minimum order of chances started at $144 for four 4.4 pound boxes. The groups would then distribute hundreds of boxes of mangoes to people who wanted them, often for no profit. In 2018, one of my cousins coordinated the distribution of over $3,000 worth of mangoes to her community from her home in New Jersey. End quote. While the WhatsApp workaround has helped get more Pakistani mangoes to the people who want them, quality control is sometimes still an issue. And these mangoes aren't skipping any part of the irradiation process, which is what most point to as the key issue holding up more efficient mango imports from Pakistan. If the mangoes could be irradiated in Pakistan, they could go straight to consumers upon arrival in the U.S., instead of having to waste precious time being transported by land to an approved irradiation facility. There is one USDA-approved facility that was supposed to open in 2019 in Pakistan, but has yet to be operational due to disputes between federal and state governments. There is interest on all sides in increasing Pakistan's mango exports to the U.S., but there remain even more challenges. Climate change, water scarcity, inadequate cold storage facilities, locust attacks, and the myriad capacity and transportation issues stemming from the pandemic. So, it's an uphill battle. But for people who grew up in Pakistan or grew up visiting family there, the underground WhatsApp mango economy has been a bright spot in a tough few years, and absolutely worth it despite the time and costs associated. One WhatsApp customer, Kasim Ejiz, told Akbar, quote, They're smaller than I remember from growing up, but the taste doesn't lie. End quote. Maybe one day, Akbar says, we'll see the cream of the crop, the Johnson mango, on shelves here in the U.S., but until then, hit up the link in the show notes for his tips on getting your own box of mouth-watering Pakistani mangoes. Jiggly, sloshing, wobbly, 
pandemonious. Those are just some of the surprising words being used to describe Saturn's core, after new research published in the journal Nature Astronomy on Monday provided some fascinating new insights about the ringed planet. And it's those icy rings that were key to these findings. Caltech's Christopher Mankiewicz, a planetary scientist, and Jim Fuller, a theoretical astrophysicist, used seismographic data on Saturn's rings from NASA's Cassini mission to measure the planet's core. Quoting the MIT Technology Review, Saturn essentially rings like a bell at all times, says Mankiewicz. As the core wobbles, it creates gravitational perturbations that affect the surrounding rings, creating subtle waves that can be measured. When the planet's core was oscillating, Cassini was able to study Saturn's C-ring, the second block of rings from the planet, and measure the small yet consistent gravitational ringing caused by the core. Mankiewicz and Fuller looked at the data and created a model for Saturn's structure that would explain these seismographic waves, end quote. And from the New York Times, quote, Saturn's core has been illuminated. Older models depicted the planet as if it were a distinctly layered cosmic jawbreaker candy. Chronoseismology has revealed the messy truth. The core is made up of not only rock and ice, but also fluid metallic hydrogen, which was previously assumed to be a separate layer. There is more rock and ice at its center and more fluid metallic hydrogen at its outer edges, but throughout, everything is mixed in a chaotic cocktail. Along with the transitionary change from fluid to gassy hydrogen higher up, this paper paints Saturn as one big fuzzy ball. End quote. And big indeed. They also found that the core is more than 50 times the mass of Earth and takes up 60% of Saturn's radius. James Friedson, a planetary scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory who is not affiliated with the recent paper, told Gizmodo in an email, quote, This is an exciting work that points to the great potential inherent in combining seismology of the gas giants with measurements of their static gravity fields. There is still much new information that can be obtained through these methods even for Saturn, for which nature has generously provided an extensive ring system that acts as a natural seismometer. End quote. Some of those other findings could include the evolution of the gas giants. Mankiewicz thinks Saturn's wobbling, mixed-up core bolsters the idea that, quote, gas giant evolution is a gradual process, beginning with the building of a core from the coagulation of bits of space rock, and then proceeding to accreting gas to form the rest of the planet, end quote. So much still remains unknown, though, and the model itself doesn't have all the answers, like Saturn's strange magnetic field, which exhibits almost perfect symmetry on its axis, or what is actually causing the core to oscillate and create the waves in the C-ring. But as Gizmodo points out, the Cassini mission, which ended in 2017, has been providing a whole bunch of new insights with plenty more to come as scientists continue combing through the data. Plus, there's the Juno probe orbiting Jupiter right now, whose data on that other gas giant could support or lend insight on Saturn as well. As the New York Times eloquently concludes, quote, The orchestra's musicians may finally be known, but the hunt for its elusive conductor continues. End quote. I was walking around my neighborhood yesterday when I noticed that one of the, unfortunately, several empty storefronts had been decorated with a huge new sign. New tenants will soon be appearing there, but not for long. For just a liminal moment, the tall gray building will be haunted by the indestructible specter of Spirit Halloween. You've no doubt seen the same thing happening in your own town. The Halloween costume and decoration store pops up in shuttered retail locations every autumn, a harbinger really, going to battle with pumpkin spice lattes for which can declare the season has begun first. During the pandemic, however, with more stores going out of business across the country, Spirit Halloween is more prolific than ever. Last year, as competitors like Party City cut back on the number of their seasonal pop-up stores by 91%, Spirit Halloween went all-in and opened up more than ever, amounting to a total of 1,400 stores across the U.S. The key to their business model is their ephemeral nature, only appearing for the spike of Halloween purchasing from late August through the end of October. Andy Mantis, a retail analyst, told the New York Times last year that Spirit was poised to do even better than usual due to lower real estate costs following the closure of so many stores. Or, as the New York Times put it, quote, Spirit is merrily feasting on the corpses of its fallen foes, end quote. And one of those corpses feeding the belly of Spirit Halloween this year is the original Barney's Department Store on 7th Avenue in Manhattan. 
described by Curbed as, quote, once the most sophisticated department store on earth, end quote, Barney's went bankrupt two years ago, and its 7th Avenue location is now facing the same fate as decrepit footlockers and borders across the land, soon to be haunted by New York City's 1980s fashion magnates donning overpriced plastic Spider Boy and Unusual Things Girl costumes. And to welcome the former Barney's store into its newly resurrected life, I think we should play a clip from Nick Lutzko's iconic, unofficial Spirit Halloween theme song he produced last year. Official theme for Spirit Halloween, guaranteed to give you a thrill. Hell to the Queen, this is Spirit Halloween, haunting the buildings of every business Jeff Bezos killed. Jeff Bezos murdered Barnes and Noble. Jeff Bezos murdered Sears. Jeff Bezos murdered Toys R Us, but Halloween is almost here. In another part of that song, Lutzko literally drops his Venmo username and says that he dreamt that Spirit Halloween paid him $1,000 per hundred retweets for making that song. And incredibly, and perhaps in a show of how well the business is doing, Spirit Halloween actually Venmoed Lutzko several thousand dollars and then collaborated with him on the sequel song. Now, if you live somewhere that the creeping grasp of Spirit Halloween has somehow not yet seized hold of, never fear, because you can get your fix at Home Depot. The home improvement store announced last month that their viral 12-foot skeleton will officially be back, this time with creepy blue LCD screen eyes and an inferno pumpkin head. So, stores may be closing their doors across the country, books and high-end clothes may be hard to come by, but Halloween decorations, apparently we've got those in spades. That is all I've got for you today. As always, this show was produced by Ride Home Media and Kaki.org. I am Jackson Bird, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.